In this video, we're going to be opening up my off-road robotics platform to see how well the gears fed in my recent backyard obstacle course test. Now, this didn't break during my test, but I'm really curious to see if there's any wear on the gears and how the material fed, so I can take these findings moving forward to make this machine even better. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and as I said this is my off-road robotics platform that I took out to my backyard on a range of grueling tests across the foliage fortress and the creality rollers of retribution to name a few. And what really surprised me is the fact that it didn't break. Uh, this is the first major test of this new platform with the four uh, sets of brushless drive motors with 3D printed gears in a portal axle arrangement down to these quite large uh, wheels and I have the variety of wheels I tested on here. It ranged from like a regular tire off a remote control car to the wobblers all the way up to these really spiky ones. And one of the wheels even broke. These uh, green ones actually broke but the gears seem to have survived. But I haven't actually opened it up and taken a look to see if there's any damage or wear and I'll be honest I can't quite remember what material I settled on. I think it was the BASF Pro 1 PLA for the pinions at least. And I think I actually printed the output in ABS, but I can't quite remember. Uh, so let's crack it open and take a look. All right, so I got my screwdriver and the wheels just unscrew off the hub pretty simply. And I have this camera here with a macro lens to give you a nice close up of what's going on. So if you're not too familiar, um, these wheels were designed by the community here on Makers Muse. And a lot of you came up with some incredibly creative designs like these spiky boys right here. Um, and the original idea was to take this down to the beach and test it on some sand dunes. And I said in the previous video while I was testing this in my backyard that that's not possible right now to uh, sort of uh, expand on that. Right now, um, here in Sydney, there's a lockdown going on. And while, yes, we can go to the beach to exercise, that's totally fine. It's not like completely banned. Um, it's not really a good look to take this down with all my filming gear when people are just trying to do their best to stay apart. So that's why I decided to not take this to the beach currently, at least till things calm down, and do it in the backyard. Some people are also right to comment on the poor surface finish on the, uh, the gearbox cover. Uh, and that's because it was printed with support material, so the way it's designed is it face down on the, on the print bed, and there's support material that sort of interfaces with it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, underside of uh, surfaces that print onto flat support material aren't always that great, and in this case they're particularly rubbish, but they're still functional. This is printed on the end of three in this case, and I probably could dial it in a little bit better, but I was in a hurry and I wanted to get these printed as quick as possible, and it does the job. Just looking at the frame, there's a little bit of damage, like a little bit of uh, filament delaminating and that kind of thing. I did notice the top cover's actually cracked, so I must have hit something hard, and with the acrylic, the way I've marked it, is I've used a laser to score where the masking tape was and peel it away to paint in those specific areas. And I think that's created like a stress point, uh, stress riser, which means it's been easier to crack there. But acrylic's very brittle anyway. Uh, so it's not too unexpected. Gotta be careful not to lose my little nuts. Okay, so we've got the first one undone. Let's open it up and take a look. Yeah, so I did print uh, the pinion in the BASF Pro 1 and the output spur gear in ABS. And I don't know about you, but I can't really see any damage on that output gear. So it was printed in ABS and there was a lot of abuse. However, it does look like the uh, D on the motor shaft has started to wear the um, inside of the um, pinion gear. All right, I got the whole thing disassembled except for this pinion gear, which um, we'll come back to. And uh, I can't get the output spur gear out of this gearbox because the bearing doesn't seem to want to come off and I don't want to force it. Uh, but that doesn't seem to matter because I've got the others apart and there's some really interesting uh, data from this. So to start with, the pinion in the Pro 1 PLA seems to have weared that abuse perfectly, which is amazing because you look at the teeth, they're, they're really small contact area. Um, onto what is the the D shaft for the output of the gear motors. Uh, some of them are a little bit dirty because there was a hole in some of the gearboxes and that means some dirt must have gotten in, which is not great for, for gear life. But the one that's the most dirty would be this one. And even so, it doesn't seem to have bent in any way. 
and the D um, inside of it seems to have been seems to have survived quite well. The output spur gears there are a slightly different story. So these were in the ABS, and you can definitely see wear starting to occur on the hex inside the 12 millimeter hex that mates and transfers torque to the uh, the wheels. You can actually see on the internal hex here that uh, there's some of the plastic starting to rub off, bit of powder there. And you can definitely sort of see it starting to smush the corners of the uh, that hex in the ABS uh, and deform it slightly. But you'd have to deform it quite a bit, uh, like I saw in my previous tests, to make it uh, fail completely and no longer transfer torque, which I don't think these wheels are going to ever be capable of. It's really the teeth I'm interested in, and they just seem fine. This one pinion gear though is very telling. So this is the only pinion gear in the whole thing that is uh, ABS. So all the others, as I said, is the other Pro 1 PLA that I found to be very tough and very strong. But this ABS uh, pinion gear has started to deform on the D shaft of the gear motor, which tells us that it's not as durable and long lasting as PLA. Uh, a lot of people were concerned about these melting, but at least in the low speed application that this uh, output gearbox has, I don't ever see that occurring. Maybe on a really hot summer day, it might be different, uh, but at least for my test previously, it had no issue. But you can see with this spur gear that it's spun um, on the shaft slightly and um, locked itself in place. I can't get it off. I'd have to sort of pry it off with a screwdriver or something to remove it. So that's all fun and games, but where's our destruction? I wanted to see, you know, bits of teeth and dust and debris from exploded gearboxes, and none of that's happened. So I think what I need to do is take this outside again with the most aggressive wheels we tested, these spiky ones, and really, really try to blow something up. Well, I broke it completely. Um, that's what I set out to do, and it didn't take that long at all. These spiky wheels are just so aggressive. Uh, remember, it's got tank steering, which is like skid steer steering. So when I want to turn, and uh, it drives one side forwards and one side backwards, and it, st it turns on the spot by skidding. These spikes don't really skid. They dig right into the grass, and by doing that a couple of times, hard accelerations on that, it became very evident very quickly that something broke. Uh, in some cases, one of the wheels actually broke. Um, I think two of them actually are broken, uh, where the layers of the 3D print up to the hub. And that makes sense. The layered bonding is the weakest point of the print. It's a bit like a wood grain. So it makes sense that it would fail there, especially if there's um, high load force on the side of the wheel, like when it was tumbling around, sort of like a lever force and just snaps the hub straight off. But the real interesting findings are in the pinion gears. So let's do a bit of a product autopsy on this platform. So here's the pinion gear printed in the BASF Pro 1 Ultra Fuse PLA. Please choose a shorter brand name. <laughs> uh, and it's failed. You can see how loose it is on that shaft and it is not spinning on that uh, D flat on the shaft of the gear motor anymore because it's split. And it's split in a really interesting way. This pinion has actually split right at the middle of that flat. Uh, for the D and it's split up towards a tooth then deviated to the side of that tooth where there probably is a bit of a stress riser and it's completely cracked up across all the layers. So it hasn't split with the layers like with the wheels for example where you'd expect. Uh, it's split where like the force just had to had to escape and there probably would have been quite a large amount of lever force as that uh, flat was trying to rotate but the wheel was fixed in place and it just you know can't expand indefinitely so it just split. And then by doing so, uh, it doesn't transmit the torque anymore. So it essentially did exactly what I wanted. It's acted like a mechanical fuse. And it's not the only one that did it. All three of the Pro 1 PLA uh, pinions have failed very similarly. Two of them failed almost identically uh, with the split in the same place. But the, the last one is actually stuck on the shaft and it didn't actually split. In fact, it sort of delaminated some of the, the, the infill areas and then it's spun. So this is the one that's spun on the shaft. You can see that it's delaminated just a little bit of where it's done the perimeters. 
and that's allowed it to deform enough to spin on that flat. So that means it's protected the more delicate and expensive brushless system inside. And then we have that one ABS pinion that I couldn't remove before I started my testing and it's spun further and now like the flat's on the wrong side but again it's jammed in place. So it would still drive wheels, it just wouldn't drive them with the full torque of the, the gear motors. Once they started to encounter too much force, the, it would just spin on the shaft. Like it's just, it's basically a friction fit at this point and not a very good one. For the output pinions though in that ABS, uh, there's very little to no perceivable damage. The teeth, and including the teeth and the pinions, haven't deformed at all. And yes, they're quite chunky for something this size, but again, they're only printed, printed in 3D printed plastic. So I would have expected some sort of damage, but I can't see any at all. Uh, and certainly no evidence of temperature coming into play. And that makes sense because that's something like this at such a low speed output, there's not gonna be much uh, friction heat buildup at those speeds. So it makes sense that uh, you're not gonna see the gears melting like you might if you're printing in a PLA uh, for a much higher RPM application like straight off remoter uh, at thousands of RPM to then gear reduce it. That's when you're gonna start to see, in my opinion, much more heat buildup, which will probably cause the PLA filaments to fail in a different manner and much faster than how they have here. I'm also quite happy with the gearbox design and how it's held up. I tried to support all the shafts with bearings and they sit, they've got a flange on them and they sit into pockets on the 3D printed parts. But uh, I printed some of these on the Up Mini in, in the same ABS as the Output Spur gears. And uh, because the Up Mini uses a raft, it doesn't, you can't print straight on the bed because it's full of holes, it's kind of annoying. But because of that, the contact area of the faceplate has lots of wispy stringy bits and they're, they're starting to fail and come away from each other. So that's more just a side effect of printing on a raft. I think it'd be easily, easily fixed by printing on a different printer where I could go straight in the bed with a really good first layer. But otherwise they're holding up really well. There's maybe a bit of marking around the pockets for where the bearings are, but I can't see any deformation and certainly no damage to them even though this thing was throwing itself around all over the backyard. So what are our findings after this destructive test? Well, I think that using these gears, these pinions as a mechanical fuse is perfect for this kind of application where you're using fairly expensive mechanical components that you want to protect and then you can do it by just printing these very quick and easy and cheap gears to act as a mechanical fuse to protect them. And for stuff like this, it's not like mission critical if something breaks while you're testing it, that's fine. Something like a combat robot, obviously you'd lose if that happens and you'd have to uh, consider the fact that maybe you need to drive these motors to the point where they might blow up. That's a very different application, but for just experimental fun like this, I'd much rather have a gear that breaks than a very fancy gear motor. The design's held up quite well, but I do need to finish sealing it properly against uh, dust and debris and the elements because even testing the backyard there's now bits of just bits of dry grass and stuff in it because it comes in from all the openings I haven't properly sealed it yet and because these are brushless outrunners they, they're removing uh, components so that's really bad you don't want stuff in there that could get sucked in and also <laughs> cause damage and when I take this to the beach eventually there's sand so that's going to be a big no-no so I need to get uh, moving to seal it properly and um, I don't even have a switch at the moment, I just plug the battery right in. So I need to source a waterproof switch like I originally planned. So it's completely sealed. But the gearboxes held up really, really well uh, to all of that abuse. So I'm very happy with those designs. And I'm very close to releasing the files for you guys to test out in the future. Now, in terms of the gears, yes, a lot of people did say that the static load testing wasn't a good uh, demonstration of gear strength. And I definitely agree with you. The whole purpose of it was to find out how the plastics failed, if they failed slowly or if they failed suddenly and take that into consideration to what I'd use in my uh, process. But it doesn't take into effect the dynamic loading of them. So to test that, I probably need to make some sort of homemade dymo that spins up the gears to a set RPM, and then I can slowly uh, restrict the output with like a uh, brake of some kind with a certain uh, torque loading to see how they react. Because at speed, there will be very different effects to what I found during my static load testing and I really want to test them to destruction. I want to see some gears melt. So I'm going to definitely try that as well in the future. So there you go, guys. I hope you found these findings interesting. If in doubt, go ahead, use PLA for your gears. If the output speed is low enough, they're not going to melt. Uh, they seem to work quite good. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.